and welcome to this week's episode of Indie Film Wrap. I'm so excited to have our special guest, Tatiana Paris, joining us all the way from LA. Hi, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me on. Yes, thank you for joining us. I'm excited to um, dive in and pick your brain. One of the questions I love to start with is how did you first get inspired to to be an actor, to be a director, to get into film? Sure, that's a really great question. Um, I started off, uh, I've been acting since I was four years old. I grew up in a traveling performance family called the Goose Family. It was kind of like a circus slash a partridge family and we toured around the US. So being creative, being a performer was like a family lineage. It was just something you did, it was something you were born into. So I always loved to act and when I moved to Los Angeles, I, I don't know if you've dealt with this, you know, I know you're an actor, uh, there comes a time when you have to start making your own content. Like it's just the, the agents, the casting directors, they all tell you, you have to do that, you have to make your own content. So I was tired of waiting around for other things to cast me. So I started making my own stuff. And along that journey, I realized how much I enjoyed that process, how much I enjoyed that creative control, really being able to have my voice heard in a lot of ways that actors can't. You know, and acting is a, a beautiful profession and it is a beautiful craft. Uh, I feel that directing and writing is a lot more hands-on uh, in the creative process. And I developed a super passion for it. Yes, I, yeah, I definitely, definitely agree that there is, um, when you become an actor, there's a certain level of control that you relinquish. You know, right. you just say, I am playing this part in this project. And with writing and directing, it can be so great to dive into that and to, to regain some of that control. Absolutely. And I, I see it a lot of the times with some of the actors I work with, I'll see the director's potential in them because there are certain actors and honestly, it can be very frustrating for a director to work with an actor who wants to be a director. You know, everyone's got their own visions. They've got their own pathways, but it's interesting to see what I saw in myself then, you know, someone who is so thirsty to have their voice heard. So that, that was me. And I felt like I was honestly usually very dissatisfied in the projects that I was doing, not necessarily because they were bad projects, uh, just because I really didn't get to like scratch that itch. I really didn't get to get in there. And I feel like that's, I know our show, we talk about a lot of tips for filmmakers, but we do cover some of the acting side too. And I feel like that's a great tip for young actors is you are a part of that creative process. You were, mm -hmm. you were picked for a reason. Um, I feel like a lot of times actors have this um, fear that kind of prevents them from speaking up or throwing their ideas out there. And I think it's, it's always good to try, right? To test the waters a little bit and see like, oh, hey, well, this came to mind if we wanna try that, you know, within your own work as an actor, if there's specific things that you think can enhance the overall project then by all means, share that. Don't keep it in and go, oh, I wish I would have said that, or like, <laughs> this could have been different or better. You know, Especially when it comes try. to your character. I feel like exactly. it, it's, it's very important um, to express because really at the end of the day, like the directors, the casting directors, the, per the producers, we're all casting you because you have this energy and you are vulnerable to this character. And we do want your opinion. And I think that, I mean, you're gonna run into directors and you know, higher ups who are their own level of controlling and level of ego, you know, you know, but I don't want that to discourage young actors for speaking up for themselves, especially when it comes to safety. Cause I feel like I was in that boat a lot as a young actor being so afraid to speak my mind, whether it was creatively or even just for safety. I, I think it, you're taught very young that you're lucky to be there and you'll get blacklisted for the smallest things and all your dreams are crushed and that's just over. And I, I really encourage, especially young actresses, to fight against that that feeling. You have a you have a, vo a voice, a trained voice. Use it. <laughs> Absolutely, but it's really scary. I, I I completely empathize. It's a really scary position to be in, but you don't want to be looking back at it later and being like, oh wow, I I can't even watch my own movies that I'm in because I've been like that. I'm so self-critical of my directorial stuff, my writing work. I mean, all artists are like. Ugh. 
don't, don't make me watch my own work. <laughs> oh my gosh. But you want to be able to say, I tried my best. I did my best. And, you know, put your voice out there. I think you'll feel a lot of pride in that afterwards. I feel like um, for me, doing improv helped a lot with that. With me Absolutely. being a part of a collaborative environment where you have to tap into your voice. You have to express. Otherwise, you're not part of, you're not uplifting the team. I recommend improv for literally every human being walking on this earth. I think it is such a great brain workout. I remember when I was doing, I did Groundlings um, in Los Angeles and I was just, even my, my quips, not outside of improv, I was just witty. I, back in the day, I was so witty. I was funny. No, but you're really, you're quick. It's just, it, even if it's unintentional, your brain is just like connecting and firing off so much faster. It's literally working the muscle. So I think anyone, anyone should do improv, but especially actors should at least, even if it's not their favorite thing, because that's, you know, some actors thrive in it and some truly despise it. I think it's important just to have it as a as a backbone. And so for you, with your journey, you know, starting in the realm of acting and then moving into um, uh, writing and directing, um, how do you feel like the improv has played into that uh, in terms of like writing stories or directing? Well, I feel like especially on set, improv is extremely important because nothing, and I'm sure anyone who's worked on a set in any capacity will know that nothing goes according to plan. There's no way. And unless you are dealing with, even then at the higher level, there's still nothing you can do. But unless you are dealing with millions and millions of dollars of budgets and other people working for you, there is no way that you're not going to have to compromise and think on the fly. There are going to be locations that are going to change last minute. There's going to be crew who are sick. You know, there's going to be actors who no longer like what they're saying, which is totally fine. Like there's going to be so wardrobe that's going to malfunction. Uh, I was doing uh, in my film, Tinsel Tokyo, the bathtub that we were utilizing for it uh, didn't have hot water. And now this is the one thing about safety. So I, I have not been true to myself. I have not been good to me, but uh, it was it was freezing cold. It was, I ended up developing like a low grade hypothermia from going into, but you you roll with it. There's certain things you have to roll with. And at that time, you know what I wish I'd improv? I wish I'd gotten a heater. I wish I had done literally anything else. <laughs> But there's just things that happen or sometimes, you know, you don't have time to get a couple extra shots or a couple extra takes like you want. And you have to look through, look through your um, deck with your AD and be like, okay, what can we combine? What can we do? Because otherwise you're not going to get the film. You're just not going to get it. So that has really helped me with improv. And I feel like there's a lot of actors out there who um, are like afraid to take that take that leap or take that step into the other side for you was there a moment was there a catalyst like what what made you decide okay here's here's my time i need to write a project did you write choose to write and direct at the same time or was it let me just get a script out that i can do first I really, I guess I was ambitious. I did do both. I wrote, directed, and acted in the first few things that I did. And I will say that, like, it's not easy. You know, it, it's it's truly not easy. I think writing and directing goes a little bit more hand in hand. But once you put yourself in front of the camera, it really is switching to do two different sides of your brain. And, you know, trying to really sink into a character and really become grounded, but also being like, okay, where's the camera? Where's the light? Is the sound guy working? Is he, is he okay? Have they got their lunches? Because then you start getting into producer brain and that's where it takes it takes a lot of uh, faith in your team and a lot of trust in them and communication, such open communication of what you need as a performer because they're often very different things. I think it was honestly being super, it was a combination. It was first being super miserable. And I think misery is something that we really, uh, we don't dive into. Sometimes misery can really push you to not be miserable. You know, complacency can be the death of artists. And I think that I was really miserable. I was very tired of going to endless auditions, getting callbacks and not getting it, not getting to the next level. And I wanted to take things into my own hands. So I got tired. And then I had a story that I wanted to tell. Like it just kind of clicked for me all at the same time where I was like, this story meant something emotionally to me, which is usually how I work as a writer director. Like something has to really connect with me emotionally. I have a much harder time just working on fluff pieces, which there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's like wonderful things to be done. I just have a harder time connecting and, and cranking them out. 
So uh, I think that I had an, a film idea and I, I just had to make it. So both those things combined started me. Ill-adjusted or a previous project? Ill-adjusted. Yes. Cool. Do you want to touch on that a bit? Like what that story yeah. that you had to get out? Sure. Well, you know, I, and I think this is such a great place for actors or filmmakers of any kind to start would be start with your family or start with what you know deeply. Like, you know, other people, whatever creatively gets you going is, is totally great. But it, it's the story is about two sisters and one who is has OCD and the other one has bipolar. And that was something that was very important because that's something I've dealt with in my family, with my siblings. So it was a, just a very raw, gritty take on these um, disorders and how it affects a family and a family life and how a family can come together through it or be torn apart. So it was just something that I think I've used a lot of my scripts as catharsis, which almost seems selfish because I feel like, you know, it should always be for like this greater, this greater good or for, or for the audience. But it was just honestly very cathartic. And I showed it to a couple of people and they liked the script. And then the next big journey was, can I actually ask for help? Can I actually ask to get this done? I feel like that's really tough for actors or independent young filmmakers is to ask for help. You want to do it all yourself. It's embarrassing. It's scary being vulnerable. But I had to ask for help. And I did. And then we moved forward. And I feel like, to back to your, your comment about, like, you know, doing work that was close to you and having mm -hmm. it be cathartic. I don't, I don't feel like that's selfish because if it's cathartic for you, it's likely also going to be, in the end, cathartic for a viewer, right? It's going to. That's you know, a lovely that's... point of view. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to keep that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I see that being the case. But like building your team—that's another great tip for filmmakers out there. You know, start like you know, meeting people who, who you respect their work and getting to know them and building the relationship before, you know, diving into a project together. For you, what was that like building your team? And do you typically use the same team for projects or do you like to find new team members to work with? All it takes is being burned a couple of times for you to be like, I'll never work with anyone else again. You know, when, and that's a, that's a bad mindset. I definitely don't recommend that to, to young filmmakers. Um, I typically work at least with the same DP. I have worked with multiple DPs and I actually really respect their work. And depending on what the project needs aesthetically, I will work with different ones. But the DP that I usually use is John Calabrese. He's an incredible DP and he's a great supportive filmmaker. I would just tell, especially filmmakers, to not get too, if you have a bad experience with, with like a crew member, and bad can, you know, be so varying, uh, but to not let it get you down from connecting with other filmmakers. You know, uh, one of my first projects, I actually did a sketch before I did Ill-Adjusted, and it went so poorly, it almost completely pushed me away from doing anything directorial. It was such a nightmare. It was awful oh it, it, it doesn't exist all the footage is gone and honestly I'm thankful for it there's certain things you're thankful I'm glad, glad it's gone but you got to get back out there and make new connections because I think sometimes we think oh we're gonna have this team and it's all gonna work and mesh so well and then you get there and there's like an odd one out or sometimes you don't know how to use your voice which is just part of like being on sets and working your own muscles especially for directors, because there's so much communication and communicating with different fields that have nothing to do with what you do. You know, your your wardrobe, makeup, lighting, actors, and they all have these different ways of communicating, understanding, and processing. So it just takes a lot of work and a lot of sets. And sometimes they're going to fail. I think that's like a really important thing to note is like, sometimes they're going to suck. I, that's something that, you know, I think is a great tip for filmmakers out there. Instead of saving all your money up for that one project that you think is going to be special or magical, start f shooting free projects, start putting yes. the work in, making those mistakes so that by the time you get to that one that you're really, really excited about, you have some experience under your belt because those failures are going to lead to learnings. And footage. You know, it's very hard to get people... Uh, on your side to work for, I mean, for the most part, free when you're starting off, free, cheap, or even to get people to give you money for your projects if you have no work. You know, you kind of have to start building your content, building your aesthetic uh, to get people to believe in you. 
And then once you have that, you have your team. And you can also go into that room if you are into the stage of pitching with confidence. And I, I, I saw from your IMDb that you um, act in act in write and or produce several shorts a year which is really impressive some people oh, you. you know it's hard to do one a year like um so with that what do you think really helps to keep that consistency i think for me it's a matter of uh what's the word for it um it's a pattern it's like um i have a very strict kind of way of formulating my days where like for script writing, so I'll start off with the day and be like, okay, I'm going to edit a previous script and then I'm going to write a new script, like a piece of a new script. And I'll, I'll work on those things and then I'll work on a deck. So I have like a few hours. I think actually I watched a masterclass with Spike Lee and he said that was like, it was consistency of pattern that like your writer, you have to write. Like even if it's just a little bit, it's, it's setting those, that time frame. And like, even if you just do something a day for your career, one on one day, could be 10 minutes, could be a phone call you've been dreading, could be an email you don't want to send, whatever it is, all those things will help you actually feel like you have some progress coming, will feel like you're moving. Because I think the hardest thing with this field is you can often feel like, how do I get to the next level? How do I do anything? How do I make this happen? And I think that if you at least feel like you're moving, it keeps you inspired and you'll find little things along the way and it'll keep you going. And then you are building that experience. So then when the, that, you know, right project or the one that you're like super stoked about comes along, you walk on set as the person who, oh, I shot five shorts in the last year i was acting in writing and directing and not the person who's like oh my gosh this is my break make or break moment ah you yeah. know like you have that ease that you can use on those other projects so i think that's that's you know good to note and building the habit like you said that's the word Thank you. The habit. I was like, what, the, what is this word with consistency? Yes, a habit is insanely important. Even if it's just a little bit, it's just pushing yourself to do it. Because I think that I don't know why everyone procrastinates. I don't know the science of it. But I notice when I'm procrastinating, I'll be like, why? Why do I not want to do this? And it's usually because I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, I don't know how to do this. And so I don't want to do it. But that's where if you keep on pushing past it, it's crazy. It seems mystical. You will. It'll, it'll come to you, whether it's a script or it's like, are you, you're messing up this thing with editing, uh, whatever it is, you'll eventually be like, oh, this makes sense. Or bringing uh, outside help in. Help is so important. And I don't know why, but I feel like as collaborative as film is, filmmakers and even actors tend to be so isolated. And I think they isolate themselves. And I think it is so important to have, whether it's outside of the film industry and you have your like supportive family or friends, or it's in the film industry, having people you can go to for advice, for pep talks, uh, to actually work with, all these things are so important. That brings up a good point about not only the help of hands-on help in making and being a part of the, the process, but also the help of having emotional support and cheerleaders and people that believe in you. I know with me, like that has sometimes meant more than than the other side, you know, just having that kind of support goes a long way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this industry is, it is really one of the hardest industries. It's one of the few where you can go to school. If you want, you can go to school, you can work on so many things and you're not guaranteed anything. You, you can move, you, I, you can move to New York, Atlanta, Los Angeles, and you're not guaranteed the goal, you know, and that's really scary. It's very overwhelming. And sometimes it feels like things are just being picked apart by luck and maybe they are. So to keep going, persistence, I do think is the one commonality in success in this industry. I do truly feel like if you work hard and you don't give up, you're already ahead of most people because it, it is just, and not even putting anything against those people. This is a really hard industry. And if it's nothing, if it's something you don't truly love, I would back away because it's just very, it's very overwhelming. It's a lot. It's a hard, hard career, but I do think it could be very rewarding. And I think to get through it, having 
people who really support you, which also goes back, goes to not allowing negativity in your circle. You know, I, I think it's so important to realize people who really have your best interest at hand and who are either using you or are jealous. Like you'll run into so many people like that. With that in mind, I'd love to hear a little bit more about Tinsel Tokyo. Um, I got to see the teaser for that and, you know, really aesthetically interesting and appealing and juicy. And um, so I'd love to hear more about the actual filming process of that. Mm -hmm. And if there's any good, like, um, I love it when we share like onset tips or takeaways. So any of those from Tinsel Tokyo? Tinsel Tokyo is one of my most vibey films that I've ever made. I, I, I call it my cologne ad of a movie where it doesn't have a lot going narratively, which is fine. You know, there's, there's things that are just emotional, emotional pieces. Uh, it was based off of a terrible breakup I went through. And then I told it through, um, succubus vampires, uh, living as, as you, you know what, thank you so much as you do me again. Um, so filming on that, that was a really stressful, set um not the people in it they were all wonderful it was just when you do indie and you have no money it's all very fast and you have to be so on top of things and as I said I I was producing writing directing and starring in Tinsel Tokyo so I was wearing a lot of hats and uh that was the one that I became low-key hypothermic on and so one of the tips I actually would say from that which is an interesting sidestep would be like you have to take care of yourself on these sets because you want to be the best for your set. So by the end of that day, I mean, I pushed through, but I was almost hypothermic. I was starving and I could barely stay awake for the last couple of scenes. And that wasn't helping my crew. You know, I realized that was a lesson I took away where like when you're going to set, whether you're an actor or whether you're any facet, feeding yourself, getting proper hydration, proper sleep, bare minimum is what you need to actually be your best creatively. I think that's a great point because you as the leader are are integral to everything that's happening, but also the example mm-hmm. to some degree. So I think that's a great tip for young filmmakers. It's, you know, if you're going to be the example, you have to take care of yourself so that you can, so that you can do that, so that you can communicate, so that you can make this project come to life so that you're not delirious um, and that your team isn't worn out and exhausted too. Like, you know, if you're the one reminding people, hey, grab a water, hey, let's take five, like, you know, trying to make it a positive environment because it can be easy, I think, to fall into that trap of go, go, go. We got to get the shot. We only have this, you know, focusing on those. So, yeah, I I think I'd watched another masterclass with Lynch And he had said that like your crew is your family. He's like, treat them like it. And I, that's really stayed with me, especially with people who are working for cheap or for free. I'm sure everyone says this. You got to feed them and you got to feed them well. You have to like, you got to treat them like the sweet, sweet babies that they are. They are working so hard. Take care of them, you know, because everyone does things for, you know, they want to be part of art. They want to help you out. They believe in your vision, whatever it may be. But if, especially if they're working for free, if they're not, you should still take care of them. But if they're working for free, you got to take care of them. And you also have to take care of yourself as an example. So I'd love to hear if you have anything in the works, anything you're excited about. Well, currently, um, which is available to see now, it's one of the few things, a lot of my films are in festivals, so they're kind of tucked away. Uh, but I have a short horror called Monsieur Mime that is now available. It's on my Instagram bio. I don't know if I have it on my website yet. I have to add that to it. But it's called Monsieur Mime. You can find the link. And it's it's a wild time about it's about a mime who goes who's like the proverbial boogeyman for a woman who's going through like a silent disease. So it's very interesting. It's dark, uh, and we're pitching it out right now to a lot of different horror streaming services. So love if people checked it out. Well, that definitely sounds very interesting. I am very intrigued. Let's take a look.
Tatiana Paris. It's been so awesome having you on the show. Thank you so much for being our guest here on Indie Film Wrap. Thank you so much for having me. 